Around the country, Americans are fleeing big cities and their big city problems for lower crime, lower tax states where the living is easier. No place is getting harder hit than the Big Apple, population about 8.4 million and falling. Today, Lisa Fletcher investigates the mass exodus and what could be the impact on America's biggest and most famous city. Pelham Bay Home Center since 1991, a fixture on Westchester Avenue in the Bronx. Each shower head, each oven, each copper pipe, a milestone to owner John Scanlon. I have over a million dollars in inventory in this store, right? It took me 30 years to buy. Plus, I know the neighborhood and the products better than any internet or box store could ever understand it. About 99% of the businesses in all five boroughs are small businesses. They're owned by folks like you. Is this something you always wanted to do? I worked for someone for a decade and said, hey, I could do this. I love being my own boss. No, it's sort of like my American dream. Still, the upside has its downside. It's very hard to... Um, try to keep the boat above water on a constant level. Between taxes. I own this building, right? The taxes are over $50,000 a year. Regulations. Beautiful woman walks in here. Right? I said, can I help you? She goes, oh, I just wanted to make sure that um, everything had the price on it, right? I go, what do you mean? She goes, I work for the city. So I go, what happens if it didn't have the price? So she, you, you would have got a fine. And ordinances that killed credits to landlords for fixing up their buildings. All the landlords that were like a good half of my business, right, um, stopped. All they do, they used to like put a new kitchen and a new bathroom, right, and fix the place up and keep the neighborhood, you know, um, viable. The cost of doing business in New York City doesn't always add up in the Bronx. Are the laws and the, the taxation rates in New York taking the American dream away from people here? Absolutely. Stories like Scanlon's echo across the concrete canyons of this city, where businesses, big and small, are thinking twice about where they're conducting business. Nationally, the average business tax per employee is $6,500. In New York State, it's nearly 63% more, at $10,400. Virginia, Florida, and North Carolina, by comparison, all below the national average. The state has an onerous array of income tax brackets. Soon, New York's top earners could pay out as much as 15%, making New York the highest in the nation. And while higher taxes on higher earners may sound like a good revenue generating option for the state, those businesses have options too, like the option to leave. Investor Carl Icahn and another billionaire, Paul Singer, moved their respective company headquarters to Florida where it's been reported top execs at both J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs are also open to relocating certain company divisions. It's not only the banks that could bail. The New York Stock Exchange threatening to leave its namesake if the state legislature resurrects a 40-year-old transfer tax on stock sales. Exchange President Stacey Cunningham writing bluntly in the Wall Street Journal recently, if Albany lawmakers get their way, the center of the global financial industry may need to find a new home. I wish a politician would run a, have their own business for a year to think how to deal with the small businesses. I am so thrilled to announce to you all that I am running for mayor of New York City. Enter New York native Andrew Yang, 2020 presidential candidate. That I am the candidate that's best situated to defeat Donald Trump soundly in the Now pledging to use the knowledge he gained launching startup companies for the good of small business owners across New York City. Can there or should there be something that a New York City mayor could do to help small and large businesses alike? I think the city needs to be a better partner and champion. Where right now when I talk to small business owners, they say they only hear from New York City to check up on whether they're complying with various regulations. Uh, instead, we should be reaching out to companies, big and small, to say, here are resources that are available. Is there any way we can help? Andrew Yang is one of some 40 candidates running to replace term-limited mayor Bill de Blasio. The duties of the office of the mayor in the city of... De Blasio leaves office with a dubious legacy, including a loss of confidence by his police force and, more recently, by 150 business leaders, 
claiming the mayor's lack of decisive leadership opened the door to higher crime rates and a declining quality of life, ultimately jeopardizing the city's economic recovery and their own bottom line. In an open letter, they write, there is widespread anxiety over public safety, cleanliness, and other quality of life issues that are contributing to deteriorating conditions in commercial districts and neighborhoods across the five boroughs. De Blasio's favorability among New Yorkers is low, too. Results of a recent Siena College poll showing Rudy Giuliani and Mike Pence with more street cred than the city's 109th mayor. Yang's ticket rivals for the June primary include city comptroller Scott Stringer, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, and Sean Donovan, who served in Obama's cabinet. Guardian Angels founder and conservative radio host Curtis Sliwa, among few Republican candidates in the running for mayor. Whoever voters elect in November will inherit a city in distress. Tourism evaporated. Broadway is dark. Restaurants and hotels have closed, leaving thousands unemployed and hacking millions of tax dollars from city and state budgets. Murder rates rising nearly 70 percent between 2019 and 2020. Year-over-year -year gun arrests surging more than 60 percent. While crimes are rising, law enforcement veteran Howard Safer is hailed for reducing them in New York City. We're going back, unfortunately, to the bad old days. Safer was commissioner of the New York City Police Department under Mayor Rudy Giuliani. What kind of city did you inherit in 1996 as police commissioner? City in transition. So there were over a thousand murders that year. When I left, uh, there were under 600. We were being heralded all over the world as being the safest large city in America. We drove drug traffickers out of New York and we used aggressive tactics to get guns off the street. And suddenly Times Square, which was a den of iniquity when we got, got there, became a family-friendly entertainment center. Notwithstanding the pandemic, do you think there's a connection between the way the city is being run and the exodus that we're seeing? Absolutely. The exodus is because taxes are high, services are low, and if you're somebody who has a, a company that you wish to survive or a large company where you wish to attract talented employees, the answer is, today is not New York. It's Florida or Texas. It's a realization many New Yorkers and hundreds of others embraced well ahead of the pandemic, when between July 2018 and July 2019, an eye-opening 2,600 people left the New York City region each week, according to one analysis of U.S. Census data. We can't take anything for granted anymore. We can't just say, we're New York City, everyone needs to be here and is willing to pay a premium. Uh, we're going to have to uh, make our our case as a community in a way that I think is new and different. Still, fresh ideas can benefit from sage advice, safer offering this to whomever wins in November. I would tell them first, let the police be the police. Make it the way it was, the safest large city in America. Don't overtax them. Don't make everything burdensome. As for John Scanlon? Like if I knew what I knew now, man, I'd be a fireman. You know, you, you work your 20 years, you get your pension. And I come to work every day to the best I can. And when you get like, keep on getting chopped down and chopped down, it's very frustrating. Is there any hope or plan for things to get better? Uh, probably not in the short term. Economically, Albany has a lot of work to do just to keep the red states that are nipping at New York's heels in the distance. And there's another unintended economic consequence happening here. So the U.S. Census is going to put out new population numbers this fall. And there is a very real possibility that New York is going to lose two House seats because of population decline. Wow. So for a city whose motto is ever upward, it looks like they're in a, a pretty significant downward spiral. Very interesting story. Thank you. Thanks.